As part of the VLGA Fast Track Leadership Development Day, we brought together a very high-powered panel to talk about governance in a council election year. David Wolf, the former inspector, now IBAC Deputy Commissioner, Andy Diamond, a respected and long-term CEO in local government, and Celia Robinson, the governance coordinator at Wyndham, shared their insights on the new legislation that's about to come into effect and the things that councillors need to be mindful of in an election year. that uh, the councillors can see a lot that's going to change in the next term in terms of governance. We've got a new contemporary piece of legislation that's going to bring about a whole raft of changes and the councillors would need to be very aware of what those changes are. We will also have a new governance toolbox that will provide us with a new range of policies, strategies and guidelines that will need to be followed. And this will also bring about a whole range of changes in terms of the way we approach governance. The man CEO relationship is absolutely crucial for the success of the way in which council and the organisation operates. It really is important that both man and CEO see it as a genuine partnership, an opportunity to have frank and open conversation. Um, that's certainly a dynamic that I try to set up with my mayors and I think I've been very fortunate in all of my time as a CEO I've been able to do that. So it's very much a no surprises approach. So the role of uh, the inspectorate and IBAC is a common question in local government about the delineation of roles. Um, and effectively IBAC has a, uh, a broader jurisdiction over corrupt conduct, so, so more systemic type corrupt conduct that's going to be potentially offences under the legislation whereas the inspectorate has the expertise for broader local government matters. So ranging from offences, and, and, and they may investigate corrupt conduct, but they can investigate all the other particular offences and behaviours across the Local Government Act, including the conduct framework. Probity and transparency will look very different, both from a legislative perspective, but also from the broader community perspective. I think we need to keep that in mind, that we've got a new piece of legislation which includes um, new requirements around transparency. There are new transparency principles which bring us to a much higher standard than we've had previously. Um, but also we need to recall that the community now has seen a number of governance failures across a wide range of sectors and they will be, that will be influencing the way that they expect local councils to work. And so in terms of transparency and probity, they will have a much better understanding of what good governance practices are. And therefore, um, the pressure will be on us to make sure that we're performing well. So for me, as soon as the mayor is elected, there is a conversation that needs to be had, irrespective of how much experience the mayor has, either as a councillor or as a mayor, there is the forming of a new contract. And that's been very clear on the differing roles. For the mayor to recognise that his or her role is to represent the council um, and that clearly I am the only staff member that the mayor has. That's always an essential conversation. There are times where that does need to be kept in check. Um, and again, if there's an effective relationship, it's easy to do so. So the focus in the election period switches somewhat from the, uh, the normal council term. The focus is clearly on protecting the democratic process, so the integrity of the election is paramount. So there are shared responsibilities between the inspectorate and IBAC in that phase. If there's systemic undermining of the democratic process, then both agencies will take a keen interest. And of course, the inspectorate will deal with the majority of the cases around uh, use of resources, campaigning, uh, electoral ballot fraud. But as I say, if it's a systemic issue that's going to undermine the system, then both agencies will take a very keen, keen interest. I, I don't see uh, the relationship changing during the election cycle. I think it's always playing with a straight bat as a CEO, as an organisation, and ensuring that the organisation is responding to the council plan, the council direction, and staying well and truly out of electioneering. It's a really interesting topic, the role of the councillor, and, and whether it's changing or changing as per legislation as that evolves. Um, I think the expectations of councillors is quite different. The legislation may not have changed or evolved what the role is, but the expectations on what councillors do is evolving. And that 
governance role that is expected of a councillor group over the business of council is something that the government and the legislative framework expect and I'm not sure that that has filtered all the way down to the councillors and the community in terms of what they expect of their councillor group. I think we need to move as governance professionals from being seen as good administrators to being seen more as governance analysts or governance auditors um, so that then we can bring that to our governance practice and we can think more proactively, more analytically and then bring that back to the councillors and the executive teams so that we're, then we are uh, seen to be more future focused. If you'd like to be part of the VLGA Fast Track Leadership Program for councillors next year, keep an eye on the VLGA website for more information.